welcome to the class um, so today we are going to discuss uh, topology and uh, the fractional quantum hall state The discussion is not uh, complete, but uh, I tried to um, keep it at a level that is, um, you know, in sync with the, uh, the rest of the material that uh, have been taught throughout the course. So, uh, we had a discussion on the fractional quantum hall effect, uh, which we have uh, seen that uh, invoking the electron-electron interaction is of supreme importance to understanding the formation of the plateaus uh, at the fractional values. So, uh, let me now ask a question that uh, what will happen to uh, topology uh, in presence of interactions, uh, electron-electron interactions or uh, you know some other interactions, uh, particularly we are interested in the electron-electron interactions. Uh, now, it is easy to say that uh, topology is a robust phenomena and as long as uh, the parent symmetries such as the time reversal, charge conjugation and the chiral symmetries are preserved, the topological properties or the topological phases are going to be protected. In fact, um, uh, you can think of including interaction in any of the problems that we have done so far in this course, but here uh, we are only interested in uh, talking about the a quantum Hall state and um, the electron-electron interactions uh, they are present there and um, uh, the effect of the interactions on the topological properties. Okay? Now, just to remind you that uh, uh, the quantum Hall state does not have any of the TCS symmetries. Okay? So, uh, this and uh, thus they belong to uh, A class um, and uh, it is not easy to uh, talk about a topological invariant, uh, but we know that uh, the, the plateaus are the topological invariants uh, in this case. And uh, let us uh, you know try to understand that how the fractional quantum Hall states um, give rise to topological considerations uh, that we are interested in. So, this is just to give you an overview of uh, fractional quantum Hall effect. As the magnetic uh, flux is uh, increased from a 0 to phi 0, where phi 0 is a flux quantum and uh, phi 0 is nothing but equal to h over e, uh, then uh, in this language of the Corbino disk, which had been told you know categorically that this is a uh, the quantum Hall effect can be seen as a pump where uh, you know as you change the magnetic field from 0 to phi 0 and then to 2 phi 0 etc. Uh, there are electrons that are going to be uh, you know transported from uh, or pumped from the inner edge of the disk to the outer edge. And uh, in the case of fractional quantum Hall effect um, whole electron is only transferred when the flux uh, is increased by m phi 0. So, let me write that uh, where you know that m is an odd denominator uh, fraction. Okay. So, uh, this tells you that uh, the, uh, the Hall conductivity is nothing but this E square over H and 1 over M and um, uh, now these uh, fractional charges can actually be detected in uh, short noise experiments and what short noise experiment does is that it uh, sort of uh, uh, the fluctuations in the charge is uh, due to the granularity of the uh, of the charge that is uh, discrete nature of the charge that is detected uh, from the fluctuation in the charge and uh, say for um, a plateau nu equal to one third this uh, will uh, tell you the short noise experiment will tell you that uh, it um, the charge carriers actually carry a charge which is given by uh, E over 3. Uh, so, corresponding to uh, 
you know one third corresponding to this new equal to one third okay so uh, this is all uh, they have been told in the context of uh, fractional quantum hall effect uh, we are just trying to bring in the topological aspects to this and um, there's just one uh, you know point of view being presented and um, we can debate whether this is uh, complete but uh, this is what uh, suits you know the course so uh, we are going to talk about a special statistics in 2d okay and why do we need a special statistics in 2d and uh, which is distinct than that in 3d uh, that has to be understood okay so uh, the exchange of two particles uh, in three dimensions uh, it brings in a phase okay and that phase uh, can be written as uh, so I, if i have a psi r1 r2 and um, I uh, swap these two particles, I am just writing two indices, then it brings in uh, a factor of exponential i pi eta and this eta is uh, typically equal to 1 and 0 for fermions and bosons. If you do this twice, uh, then it should come back to the same uh, scenario, so which means that this is equal to exponential 2 pi eta and psi of r1 r2 so so this is uh, exchange once and this is exchange twice okay so uh, that tells you that uh, exponential 2 pi i eta has to be equal to a uh, uh, 0. So, this has to be equal to 1 so that tells you that eta equal to 0 or eta equal to 1 both are possible and this is the choice for bosons and this is a choice for fermions. Okay. So, this is that uh, permutation um, statistics or exchange statistics that we are familiar with in the context of fermions and bosons. But there is a subtle difference in 2D. In 3D, the exchanges can be done without crossing each other's path. Okay? So, uh, the two particles can be uh, smoothly exchanged without uh, getting tangled with each other. But in 2D, that does not happen. It cannot be done without tangling the paths. Let me give you an example. So, uh, in 2D, uh, let me, um, you know, uh, sort of draw this. I'll have to draw it carefully. So, this is um, so it is this part is, uh, uh, you know, by a dotted line. So, let me show the dotted line just to remove any so this is that dotted line which it does not cross I go back to my black color so then um, and so on so this is again should be uh, drawn in and I just stop here so this is again in red color okay so where the crossing does not occur and so on so forth okay so this again here and so on so this is a clockwise um, exchange uh, in 2d so this uh, the particles are being exchanged but this exchange cannot uh, take place in 2d uh, without crossing each other's path so they have to cross so this is a clockwise exchange uh, let me call it a clockwise And similarly, an anti-clockwise uh, will look like a 
and so on. Okay. So, this is that anti-clockwise exchange, sorry. and so on. So, uh, all right. So, this is that exchange that we are talking about and um, if you recognize this, this uh, looks like a braid of the hair. So, this is called as a braiding or uh, the statistics is called as a braiding statistics. And um, uh, it is also called as a fractional statistics. We will not uh, discuss about it too much, but it is still important to know that uh, this uh, statistics is uh, quite important in 2D because um, it gives rise to a value of eta uh, that is neither 0 nor equal to 1 and uh, corresponding to a clockwise exchange. Uh, we have uh, psi r1 r2 this is equal to exponential minus i pi eta psi of r2 r1 and corresponding to an anti-clockwise exchange uh, psi of r1 r2 is equal to exponential i pi eta psi of r2 r1 okay uh, and here uh, eta is uh, neither equal to 0 nor equal to 1 and uh, it takes uh, fractional values And uh, that is why the particles would be called as uh, anions as opposed to fermions or bosons. Just to rewind, eta equal to 0 for bosons, eta equal to 1 for fermions. But in 2D, these are called anions because it can take uh, this eta can take any value uh, between 0 and 1, any fractional value, and that is why they are called anions, and uh, eta takes um, uh, values that are fractional. So, uh, this gives rise to a particular kind of statistics which is called as a fractional statistics or uh, braiding statistics. So, uh, we uh, keep this, um, this discussion or the deliberation of the statistics to a bare minimum. And um, just uh, tell its um, you know significance to the topological properties that we are interested in in very brief. So um, now uh, let's look at the the fractional quantum Hall state. So, uh, the fractional quantum Hall states are of course um, incompressible. We know that uh, the chemical potential uh, it would not arise if you, uh, you know, pack more particles or that is if you include more particles, the chemical potential remains insensitive and uh, that is how it is incompressible. And uh, because it is incompressible, the excitations of the system are going to be local excitations. And these excitations also have characters as that of the charges which are uh, nothing but the electrons. Now, these excitations actually carry fractional charge which means that uh, these uh, uh, one excited state uh, and another excited state would differ by these uh, fractional charges. Um, and these as I said that these uh, excitations would carry uh, charge which are like the electrons themselves but they would carry fractional uh, charges. Okay. So, this is the only thing that is different uh, here uh, in, in the case of the fractional quantum Hall state. In the integer quantum Hall state as well, uh, they are the states are uh, or the plateaus uh, denote uh, incompressible liquids 
and uh, there of course the excitations are again local but then uh, these uh, excitations carry uh, integer charges uh, whereas these are fractional charges. So, um, uh, we want to now go out of the ground state uh, that we have studied so far in the context of fractional uh, quantum Hall state or the Laughlin state uh, was uh, predominantly we the discussion that we had was about the ground state uh, of the uh, Hall fluid. Now, we want to uh, go out and talk about excitation. So, we are uh, you know in the excited state and the excited state of this Hall fluid uh, it uh, comprises of excitations uh, which, which I just said that they are local excitations. And how do we now write down or modify the Laughlin state that we had written down earlier. And uh, let me write down, so these are uh, Z1, Z2, etc. are the electrons, uh, the coordinates of the electrons and a z1 prime z2 prime etc are the coordinates of the uh, excitations okay so these are complex space uh, coordinates coordinates in the complex space and uh, so this is like a zn and uh, just for uh, making it a little uh, distinct we call m excitations so n uh, denote the the particles of or the electrons of the system and m denotes the number of quasi particles there in the system and this can be written as j equal to a 1 to m this is for the quasi particles and a product i from 1 to n this for the particles and we have an additional jastro factor which is like z i uh, minus z j prime and uh, we also have the usual uh, k less than l z k minus z l uh, prime uh, I mean z k minus z l to the power m and exponential the ubiquitous uh, um, Gaussian which is written as z i square by 4 l b square okay this part has already been written down uh, so that's that's the Laughlin state and now we have added a term which is um, um, a, another term which uh, uh, keeps the quasi particles away from the particle such that uh, the particle density or the quasi particle density uh, say the quasi particle density at the site of the particle is equal to 0 okay and uh, this uh, z i denote uh, the coordinates of the electrons and z j prime denote the coordinates of the quasi particles. Thus, this is actually the excited state. And uh, now we uh, need to understand uh, the nature of the state and uh, let me write it down. You know this extra uh, jastro term that you see here is uh, it sort of make sure that uh, the these uh, particles or the quasi particle uh, has a charge which is uh, uh, minus E over M which we will call it as uh, E star and um, these uh, electrons of course have charge minus E and this makes sure that the, uh, the particle and the quasi particles do not come together. Okay. Uh, so, in particular if we have we have m quasi particles I hope you remember that m is actually the uh, magnetic quantum number for the state ok. So, uh, then we can write down uh, I take a shorthand notation to write this z and z prime this is equal to i equal to 1 to m and a z i minus z j prime to the power m and then of course, the usual uh, ground state of Laughlin e to the power minus i equal to a 1 to n and a z i mod square by 4 l b square l b being the magnetic length that we have uh, 
introduced several times earlier it is equal to h cross over e b. Now, um, it will help us a, a priori it is not clear, but it will help us if we try to um, normalize this wave function. Okay? So, uh, now uh, normalizing this wave function is not very easy, uh, but what comes handy is the plasma analogy. Okay? So, exploit the plasma analogy and uh, in the plasma analogy uh, the uh, so we will write down the partition functions. So, there is the partition function was written as exponential minus beta u where u is the potential energy of the plasma okay? and of course, it is a cold plasma it is not plasma that we are uh, usually familiar with which are at very high temperatures. And um, just to remind us of the, uh, the potential energy of a plasma that we had written down earlier without this quasi particle term is u now z i now it is only the uh, electrons it is equal to minus 2 m over beta uh, and uh, this is k less than l log of uh, z k minus z l uh, divided by l b um, and a plus 1 by 2 l b square beta uh, sum over i equal to 1 to n uh, z i square and so on. Okay? So, that is uh, the uh, potential energy and now with the quasi particles the modified potential energy is and that is u z i and z j prime and that is equal to minus 2 m over beta uh, k less than l log of uh, z k minus z l the same things which we have uh, written here and uh, plus 2 uh, L B square beta and uh, I equal to 1 to N Z I square. And now, we also have a contribution coming from the quasi particles which is this is I less than J uh, this L N z i minus z j prime that is a quasi particle term divided by l b. So, this term is new, new term due to the quasi particles. Okay. So, uh, once we write down this and let us see how it helps us. So, we will uh, write down this uh, z, I will write it uh, big z because so that uh, you do not get confused with the coordinate uh, the small z the complex coordinates that we are talking about. So, this is the partition function. So, just write partition function is equal to exponential minus beta u and um, this is equal to sort of uh, a product of i uh, and then we have an exponential k less than l and um, a log of uh, z k minus z l mod square minus 1 over 2 l b square uh, i z i square and a plus i i less than j uh, log of uh, z i minus z j prime square. Okay? So, that is uh, the partition function and uh, how this partition function helps is what we are going to see. Uh, and uh, so, just going back uh, to what I said earlier that it is important uh, to understand that we have to normalize the wave function and what do we do with the normalized wave function is something that we are going to come. Uh, we are going to uh, calculate the Berry connection 
and um, so we are just trying to uh, normalize the excited state uh, that we get by including maybe m uh, you know um, quasi particles in the system in addition to n particles that are there so uh, we can write down this um, uh, the state uh, as it's like 1 by root over of z and then uh, we have a z1 prime a z2 prime and so on and a z m prime okay so that this z becomes equal to a z1 prime z2 prime z m prime and a z1 prime a z2 prime and a z m prime okay so that's the partition function so this z will be used in the partition function and we have to calculate the partition function using the plasma analogy and uh, what do we do with that we calculate the berry connection remember the berry connection is analogous to the vector potential so in general uh, there are two uh, ways to get the topological invariant one is that uh, you can calculate the uh, the Berry curvature and integrate it over the Brillouin zone or you can calculate the Berry connection and take a closed loop integral uh, in the Brillouin zone but of course in this particular case we do not have a Brillouin zone because there is no uh, symmetry uh, being present in the system but we will still calculate the Berry connection uh, by using uh, these as the parameters that is the uh, <coughs> these um, complex uh, coordinates as a parameter. So, uh, a this Berry connection is written with the a with curly a say. So, this is a z prime this is equal to the definition is equal to a psi and a del del z prime and a psi ok. Where z prime the complex um, coordinates are uh, the parameters that are used here ok. Alright, so uh, we have to calculate the Berry connection and um, the Berry connection takes the form that this is equal to a z prime this is equal to i over 2 z del z by del z prime so the one that is in the denominator or rather the what you take a derivative with respect to is the complex uh, coordinate that is here. So, it is i over z uh, I am trying to write it as big as I can here and this is equal to a z prime uh, del del z prime uh, and a z prime ok. So, just to make sure that this is partition function uh, z z prime which are smaller complex coordinates ok. Then uh, this is equal to, uh, so this is what you get uh, if you apply uh, this uh, psi, this this psi is this uh, written as this uh, you know the, uh, the quasi particle uh, uh, wave function and uh, you uh, calculate the quasi particle uh, or rather the Berry connection from the quasi particle wave function like this. So, a uh, step would uh, bring you to this form. So, this is the form of the Berry connection that we have to calculate that is we have to take a derivative of the partition function with respect to uh, z prime. So, del z uh, del z prime this is equal to a del del z prime and a z prime a z prime because we have said that this uh, capital z is nothing but this z uh, prime and the z prime inner product of that and this is equal to a z prime uh, del del z prime uh, and a z prime. So, the first term uh, can be written as or rather the both the terms together can be written as i over 2 z z prime del del z prime uh, and z prime uh, minus i over z uh, z prime del del z prime and z prime ok. Uh, so, this two put together will give you a minus i by 2 z uh, z prime and del del z prime and z prime 
okay and this is nothing but minus i over 2 uh, del del z prime of log of z and uh, I hope you understand that log of z is nothing but the uh, the free energy of the plasma that we are talking about okay however uh, calculating this quantity is not so easy uh, it's quite difficult to calculate this quantity but uh, one can get a, another layer of simplification uh, if you recognize that uh, these quasi particles can actually be uh, taken or considered as impurities okay uh, so uh, we are talking about impurities in an electron liquid okay so it's like a jellium model uh, because these quasi particles uh, it, when they act like impurities uh, it, the effects of these impurities or th these are charged impurities okay so these charged impurities the effect of them or rather the electrostatic potential due to these impurities are going to be screened away by the charges by enveloping them um, uh, around them okay and the charge will uh, sort of electrostatic uh, potential will fall off as exponential minus r by lambda so we'll write as um, another simplification so consider the quasi particles as embedded impurities in an electron liquid this brings us to a picture which is uh, known as the jellium model and um, these um, the impurities are going to be screened like um, the effect of impurities r by lambda where lambda is called as a screening length or device screening length it's usually called as a device screening length and uh, it uh, in actual systems i mean uh, they are uh, they go as a root over of t where t is the temperature but of course here we are talking about plasma which is uh, at, at very low temperature so uh, let's not you know worry about this uh, dependence on the temperature but let's uh, keep this in mind that the electrostatic potential really gets screened off so the effects of the impurities uh, or rather these quasi particles cannot be felt at a distance which is larger than uh, lambda okay so device screening length so uh, that uh, is really a simplification in the sense uh, what will happen is so these uh, the picture or uh, there's uh, this called as let's call this a jellium picture the jellium picture provides the partition function z to be um, independent of of the impurity centers okay so this is an important very important simplification that occurs which means that this will not have any effect on the impurity centers or uh, these uh, you know the z prime these um, uh, variables because their effects are going to be screened uh, by the, uh, the, the charges or the carriers of the system. Uh, it also brings in some uh, subtle additional complications which we are uh, going to deal with. Uh, the complications that it uh, brings is that it uh, ignores, so far we have ignored two important things. One is the uh, interaction uh, in this uh, in this picture in this jellium picture in which uh, so it's like a plum pudding kind of model uh, in which uh, these uh, 
the impurities are like uh, uh, plums which are put in the pudding and these plums, the effect of the plums are screened uh, by the charges that uh, constitute the pudding. So, overall the system uh, maintains a charge neutrality. So, there is an interaction energy uh, between the impurity and the constant background charge. So, uh, we have missed. So, these are the two things we have missed, which will have to be included. So, the, the, because of the charge neutrality, you need a background positive charge. This impurity and the charge, that charge has, is missed, which we will have to take into account. And uh, suppose we have many impurities in the system, then the Coulomb interaction uh, between the impurities. Uh, this were missed while writing down the potential energy of the plasma and these have to be taken into account now. Okay. So, uh, we will have to write some uh, long expressions, uh, but uh, that cannot be helped. So, this is u z z prime now would uh, consists of uh, this uh, uh, terms which are k less than l. Uh, this is a z k minus z l divided by l b minus m uh, i and k. So, this is um, a log of uh, z k minus z i, I mean z prime i uh, by l b. And um, uh, then uh, this new term that is going to be put that is i less than j uh, log of um, z i prime minus z j prime divided by L b that is the potential energy uh, because of uh, the impurities. Uh, so, that is the Coulomb potential or the uh, which arises because of the Coulomb in, um, interaction between the impurities. And uh, then uh, this is m by 4 l b square uh, k equal to 1 to n uh, z well k or i does not matter i i mod square uh, plus 1 over 4 l b square uh, sum over uh, z i prime square and uh, this is i equal to 1 to m. So, uh, this term is new uh, which is basically nothing but this 2 and this term is new as well okay? and that is uh, basically coming from the interaction energy between the impurity and the uh, constant background charge. Okay? All right. So, this uh, gives a form for exponential minus beta u uh, z z prime is equal to exponential uh, minus 1 over m i less than j log of z i prime minus z j prime mod square plus 1 over 2 m l b square and a z i prime mod square and then multiplied by z this z we have written earlier okay that is the uh, partition function uh, of the plasma. Okay. So, now this simplification that we have written down here that this z has to be independent of the impurity centers now comes into play then now of course, you see that uh, this uh, depends on the impurity centers which are uh, z prime i's and z prime j's. So, this z that you see here has to uh, annihilate the effect of this z prime i and z prime j. So, that tells you that this z 
has to take a form apart from a constant which is exponential uh, 1 over m uh, i less than j uh, log of uh, z i prime minus z j prime and a minus 1 over 2 m l b square uh, z i prime square and uh, there is a sum over i okay just to have uh, you know cancel the effects of this so that no z prime um, either z prime i or z prime j or any of the z primes they uh, stay in this uh, quantity which is needed for us to calculate the uh, Berry connection. So, uh, that uh, tells you that if you have this now you can take as del z del z prime ok and then now it is not difficult at all. Uh, and this is required to calculate this uh, azi prime or az prime ok. So, azi prime now becomes equal to uh, minus 1 by i by 2 m uh, 1 over zi prime minus zj prime and uh, so these are you know i less than j. Uh, you see the log gives you a 1 over uh, when you take a derivative with respect to zi it gives you uh, this zi prime minus zj prime plus uh, i zi star uh, and a 4 m l b square. You see there is a zi prime uh, mod square. So, if you take a derivative with respect to z i, uh, you are left with a z i star. So, that is the z i star. So, this is the Berry connection uh, that we wanted and what do we do with the Berry connection about the topological properties? We will uh, take it uh, in the parameter space, we will take a closed contour integral which will give us a, a topological invariant, a so called topological invariant and this topological invariant here turns out to be the charge, uh, the, the fractional charge that we uh, get in this quantum Hall effect. So, what we need is the following, we need uh, a z i prime a d uh, z i, I mean z i prime and then this over a closed contour. So, you can sort of drop the i index and then I uh, can do this um, integral and this integral will uh, give you. So, we can write down this exponential i gamma is equal to exponential i uh, because your a is like the vector potential which means that uh, the magnetic field uh, is obtained from the curl of the vector potential ok. And this magnetic field is nothing but the Berry curvature, uh, but here Berry curvature is not of much use because we do not have any crystalline symmetry. For crystalline uh, solids or crystalline systems where uh, there is a band description available, then uh, one can calculate this uh, Berry curvature. So, we are uh, calculating the vector potential or the Berry connection. Uh, so, this uh, the line integral of this over any closed line will give us this uh, phi ok the flux because a dot d l is nothing but uh, b dot d s uh, because uh, b is equal to curl a. Uh, so, then uh, one gets a flux and that is exactly what one uh, needs here. So, there is a e star over h and uh, this is uh, there is a h cross and uh, there is a c and there is a a z prime and a d z prime ok. So, uh, this is uh, a basically uh, there is a Berry phase. So, gamma is the Berry phase and um, so uh, if you equate the two and uh, know that this is equal to the flux phi uh, then exponential i gamma is equal to uh, exponential i e star phi by h cross and uh, then uh, of course, your uh, gamma comes out to be e star phi over uh, h cross and uh, uh, we know that uh, e star is equal to uh, e over m 
where m is that fraction say uh, for the new equal to 1 over 3 m is equal to 3 so e star is equal to e over m so this is the fractional charge uh, here is the topological charge I mean it is a topological invariant uh, or you can call it a topological charge. So, uh, or uh, and this is the topological invariant. So, this is how the you know the topological uh, interpretation or uh, of the quantum Hall fluid can be brought about and in which we see that uh, charge is uh, is quantized by uh, these uh, e over m and as you know that this will lead to the uh, sigma x y quantization which is nothing but uh, a sigma 0 divided by m and so on and then that gives you this uh, one third plateau and so on. So, uh, this is the the topology of the quantum Hall fluid that uh, I thought that is relevant for this uh, to tie up the ends of uh, this discussion on the fractional quantum Hall uh, state which uh, you cannot uh, explain uh, without invoking the interactions. So, in general you know uh, the classification of matter is uh, laid down by Landau in which he said that with you know systems with symmetries etc you can uh, easily uh, write down an order parameter a microscopic order parameter for the system and uh, which when either vanishing or diverging would uh, uh, give rise to a, a phase transition and now uh, these quantum hall states as we have said a number of times that uh, they do not have any symmetries we are not talking about crystalline systems we are not talking about uh, the time reversal symmetry which is anyway broken by the external magnetic field uh, there is no uh, there is no charge conjugation symmetry there is no chiral symmetry being present. So, everywhere uh, the box is unticked that is uh, the T C and S which we have uh, learnt uh, all are unticked here which means that there is no symmetry present. And in which case uh, there is uh, according to Landau's classification it is very hard to um, you know talk about an order parameter. Instead one can talk about a topological order that is present that characterizes the uh, system and it is um, uh, the plateaus occurring at uh, you know the fractional values uh, which of course come from the fractional charge that we have just derived. So, this is a uh, limited way of bringing in how the quantum Hall fluid uh, is uh, related to the topological considerations. Uh, so, just to rewind a little that we have of course, uh, taken uh, help from the plasma analogy and uh, this uh, quantum Hall fluid is indeed a very uh, new form of matter and this uh, plasma really aids us in writing down the potential energy and from there one writes down the partition function of the system and this uh, partition function of course, this beta that you have seen or uh, exponential minus beta u beta is is really the temperature which comes out uh, uh, from the it depends upon the m the index m which is nothing but the magnetic quantum number of the system ok. And uh, from there uh, we had to uh, you know uh, undergo another level of uh, simplification where we have uh, seen these excited state comprising of quasi particle as uh, the there are localized impurities that are present uh, at these z prime locations. And uh, because of these structure of the system uh, we can consider that uh, these charges are or rather the effects of these charged impurities are screened uh, by the uh, constituent carriers of the system and uh, that is how uh, one um, achieves the simplification that uh, the partition function uh, would be totally independent of the impurity coordinates or the coordinates of the impurity uh, particles. Uh, and from there one can could calculate the Berry connection and take the integral of the Berry connection uh, over you know a closed path in the parameter space that again is uh, is laid down by the z primes which are the coordinates of the 
uh, impurity uh, or the quasi particles that are there. So, uh, this sort of uh, in a limited way we establish the connection between uh, topology and the uh, fractional uh, quantum Hall state. Uh, we have done uh, it quite extensively in case of non-interacting systems, uh, but uh, fractional quantum Hall effect is uh, a strongly rather uh, a new kind of system where the electron-electron interaction cannot be uh, ignored and um, we have uh, shown the importance of topology here as well. So, uh, let me uh, wind up here and uh, say that uh, what we have seen uh, throughout this <coughs> course. So, we have uh, seen we have seen um, the definitions of topology and how uh, condensed matter physics and topology there is an interplay between these two seemingly different uh, phenomena. Topology is a branch of mathematics which deals with um, you know uh, continuous uh, deformations of the system uh, and is characterized by an invariant which we have seen that it is a uh, the genus of a sphere or, or a genus of an object remains an invariant uh, under this smooth deformation. So, it is uh, topology and uh, topological invariants. Then we have done a uh, quantum Hall effect uh, and to begin with uh, I Q H E was done and uh, this, so this uh, can be explained by a non-interacting picture and a 2D electron gas placed in a strong uh, perpendicular magnetic field will uh, show quantized Hall plateaus which uh, actually are nothing but the uh, topological invariants coming out uh, uh, which can be seen uh, via uh, the Kubo formula. So, the, uh, the conductivity expressions will have an integer and that integer is identified with the topological invariant. So, uh, the formation of the plateaus and they being resilient to disorder and uh, impurities uh, is uh, not a coincidence, but it happens because uh, they are protected by something uh, quite uh, significant. And then we have done 1D uh, tight binding models and have seen uh, topological implications in them. So, uh, in particular uh, we have done the uh, SSH model uh, and a Kitaev model. Uh, and they show uh, a topological to trivial transition and uh, we have also talked about the topological invariant which is uh, here the uh, you know the winding number. Uh, we have done graphene and um, uh, graphene of course, has prospects of uh, topological uh, insulator and actually Holden had uh, uh, shown that um, if you make the second neighbor hopping to be complex and it has a directionality uh, then that breaks the time reversal symmetry. So, one can actually have a quantum Hall effect without the necessity of having an external magnetic field or Landau levels. So, these are uh, the quantum Hall effect without Landau levels. Uh, so, uh, graphene could be uh, one of them, uh, but of course, um, uh, because of uh, very uh, small spin orbit coupling, uh, it is uh, not a candidate for a topological insulator. Nevertheless, graphene was uh, uh, done at length uh, in the course and uh, so on. So, then we have looked at a tenfold classification. And uh, we have uh, uh, looked at the quantum spin, I mean quantum anomalous Hall effect. quantum spin Hall effect I, 
in each of these cases, you know, the tenfold classification aids us in understanding the topological invariant uh, depending on the symmetries that are present in the system. And the symmetries are uh, categorized as T, C and S where T denotes the time reversal symmetry, C is the charge conjugation symmetry and uh, S is uh, the chiral symmetry which is usually the product of the two. Uh, then we have uh, done this uh, BHZ model um, which is a model for the CDTE uh, HGT structures ok. Then we have done a uh, fractional quantum Hall effect and showed that how uh, the fractional quantum liquid or uh, which is like a cold plasma has a topological implication. Uh, there is a certain uh, kind of uh, statistics that is valid for the for in 2D uh, which are relevant for this discussion of uh, fractional quantum Hall effect. And then uh, briefly we have uh, looked at uh, 3D topological insulators. Okay. So, I hope uh, you have enjoyed the course, you have learnt several things from this. Uh, this is the beginning of uh, a research area that is very fertile and every day there are uh, new results coming up, new materials coming up. So, all these things that you uh, learn have a lot of significance on the material properties, um, their uh, transport properties, uh, magnetic properties etc. And uh, that is how I hope that uh, this course has served the purpose that it was uh, meant for. Thank you very much. Thank you.